Hello, hello, hello. Once again, once again, we are here weekly for the She Merges Motivational Affirmations with Dr. Linda Joseph. Dr. Linda Joseph, I am here each week, every Thursday at 7.30 p.m. bringing weekly affirmations that you can take with you daily through your practical living, uh, to school, to work, whatever it is that you're doing, you can apply it. Today's affirmation is on elevation. Elevation is to elevate, to go to another dimension, to go higher, whether it's an education, in your business, whatever it is that you're doing, to elevate, to go higher, to promote. So on today, I have a special guest with me um, on today, and she is a mighty woman of God. I met her about two years ago on the She Mergent series, which was a virtual, a virtual conference, and it's been wonderful having her on. Her name is Pastor Stephanie Smith. I will now give an introduction on Pastor Stephanie Smith so that you guys can go ahead and welcome her. Go ahead and share, 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 share the live, share the live, share the live. Bring your friends on, bring your families on as we are in the house today presenting to you on today. Amen? Presenting on today. So I have uh, Pastor Tiffany Smith. She is an international four-time best-selling author, cognitive coach, pastor, international speaker, entrepreneur, educator, and podcast host. Stephanie is the founder of BASIC, which is B-A-S-I-C, a ministry for young and young and adult women, and the CEO of Belle Jane. Beautiful Women Grace by God Enterprises LLC, a business designed for women's beauty, health, and mind wellness. She serves as an associate pastor for Dominion International in Charlotte, North Carolina, under the leadership of Apostle Stanley and Dr. Shiraz Smith. Pastor Stephanie serves as a co-overseer with their future spouse, a ministry group for wives in waiting under the leadership of Dr. Alita Laws Kimball, who also serves a ministry and liaison for training and development for kingdom women in ministry, all right, which is international. Apostle Gideon Daniel, overseer, Pastor Stephanie is a conference host for the He Choose Me movement and has hosted a variety of virtual gatherings and soon to launch her in-person prophetic gathering in January 2024. Everyone, let us welcome, welcome, welcome Pastor Tiffany Smith on today to the She Merges Motivational Affirmations. Let's give her a warm welcome. Woo welcome, welcome, welcome to She Merges, which is a movement of emerging, coming away from anything, whether it's past traumas, uh, hurts, relationship, whatever it is, it's to move away, to shift. So on today, we are talking about elevation. So why don't you go ahead and tell us more about you today, Pastor Tiffany. Hello, everyone. I just want to just send greetings from Charlotte, North Carolina. I would like to first say thank you, Dr. Linda, for having me. I'm so excited to be with you again and grateful for God connecting us. Um, so a little bit about I would say about elevation, I went through, say, two years ago, I was in a different, definitely, sorry, in a different season in life. And so um, I believe that God was preparing me two years ago to enter into a season of elevation. And at the time, I knew that God was getting ready to kind of move me. And I kept hearing it. God's getting ready to elevate you. He's getting ready to elevate you. Um, and a lot of times we get so excited when we hear that word elevation, 
Um, and I think for me, I was very, very nervous because I know that when God is getting ready to do something new in your life, it always requires some sort of sacrifice from you. Um, and so I went through a season um, of, you know, really having to separate myself and a lot of things I didn't really have all the answers, um, but God began to speak to me and tell me that, um, you know, in this season, I'm going to have to remove you. So there were a lot of things I had to let go of. Um, there were some things that I didn't feel like I could let go or release on my own. And so um, once God began to just kind of keep me in that season where, you know, they say God will prepare you before you enter into the season. And so I believe and know that a lot of the things that I had gone through, a lot of the things that I had journeyed through, um, even within the last, I would say, seven years, um, got me prepared for that particular elevation. Um, and so during that time, I remember even before moving back to Charlotte, I was in um, living in Virginia. And I remember being under a particular ministry where my pastor saw um, different gifts on me and knew that you know, there was a call of ministry on my life, but he knew that he was not the person to release me into that um, and to elevate me or to put me in specific positions. And so I remember a word that he released to me one particular summer, and I was just really puzzled because I said, okay, Lord, what is getting ready to happen? Um, you know, pastor has released me. He's released me into my call. He's released me into my destiny. And, you know, I knew then that God was getting ready to do something. And so sometimes God will bring you, and I hear this saying a lot. I may not even say it right, but there are a lot of a lot of sayings that kind of goes along the lines of sometimes God will bring you back into the original place. Um, some people say where you were hurt or um, different things. But for me, I think it was a place of um, just being under the right covering, being under where I needed to be. And that was part of really reconnecting back with my parents. Um, not that we were distant in any way, but I lived from college on. We were kind of separated, separate states. But I always knew that there was something that my parents were supposed to do, not because they're my parents, but God had given them the grace to, to elevate me, put me in that position and to release me. Um, and so the last time we were here two years ago, um, you know, I was ministering, but I was still in a different place. Mm -hmm. um, and to just look back and just, just think back on where I was, even spiritually and emotionally. Um, yes, I was confident. Yes, I was bold, but I didn't really embrace the entire thing. Um, and just talking about embracing the entire thing. I think there were some areas where God um, took his time with me. Um, because I was a little stubborn, I was a little hesitant, I was a little fearful, um, because sometimes God will reveal his his purpose and his plan for your life. He'll show you the things that he's placed on the inside of you. Right. And sometimes it's going to take time for you to get there. Um, and not knowing all the things that he had already prepared me for, right. I had to kind of really accept that, okay, God, you chose me. This is what you've called me to do. And so I had to really be confident in that. And to stand here uh, before you now to say that I I know that, you know, I had to really let those things go. I had to separate myself. And, and it took a lot um, because it was something that I felt like I knew I needed to disconnect from, whether it was friendships, whether it was relationships, um, there were a lot of things that I would question um, and to look at it now, right. I kind of see what God was doing because sometimes your connections, your friendships, they may not always be bad, um, but there are certain levels that God has, has placed, has graced you with, and there are certain places that you need to go that right. doesn't always require those people you're connected to. Um, so in that season of separation, God is going to really take you through a process, um, a process where you know, you're going to search within yourself to just kind of discover who you are and who you, God has created you to be. And so even during that time of separation, you know, even while getting ready to enter into that elevation, because I believe that God had already elevated me in the spirit, um, but there was a, there was something that had to take place here, even on earth. And so even 
just going to my parents and I remember God just releasing that, you know, now is the time. It's time for you to to move to the next level. It's time for you to be elevated. This is what I want you to do. This is what I've called you to be. Um, and I, I got a little caught up for a moment just because I was like, well, what are people are going to say? You know, I started thinking about all these different things. And I'm like, people are probably just going to have so much to say and say, oh, they're probably doing that because, you know, that's her daughter. And a lot of people have this stigmatism of preacher's kids always following their 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 parents' footsteps or different things like that. Or they just hand them titles. And I it was just like, no, I worked for it. And I knew what God was doing in my life, even at a young age. Um, but that was something I always pushed back until there's, there was a desire and there was a kind of like an emptiness in me where I kept saying and kept feeling like, God, I know that this is what you want me to do. So I need you to help me move past my fears. I need you to help me to move past the naysayers. Right. And it was just a lot. It was a very, very interesting journey. And I know many people can kind of talk about their journeys and different things like that. But it, for me, it was definitely a very uncomfortable season. Um, it was a season where I felt like I was alone, but I knew that I wasn't alone. I knew that God was with me, but it became a very, very quiet place. Right. Um, this particular type of silence was something very unknown to me. I didn't know how to respond. I'm like, God, are you listening? Do you hear me? You know, what is going on? What are you right. doing? Um, but even in that time, God was developing me. He was strengthening me. He was showing me um, things about myself that I needed to work on. Um, and even stepping in a leadership role as a pastor, associate pastor, um, I always knew that that would take place, but I didn't know it would take place the, or happen the way that it did because I was right. like, oh, wow. Um, and I remember um, a prophet speaking to me and she said to me, she said, you know, when your parents launch their ministry and when they do this and when they go into it, she said, you're going to have to be ready because God has something attached to that for you. Right. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Right. Um, but after a while, I was like, oh, man, I know what she's talking about. And she said, and God's going to give you that desire. She said, it's like it's going to leap leap like a, a baby in your belly. Right. And a couple of years went by. And then 2021, I think around 2020, it took place. And I was just like, oh, my gosh. Um, and even in then, even in accepting that, there were some things that shifted even right. after stepping into it. And, you know, a lot of times when you step into something, of course, people love to talk about the warfare and right, the different right. things like that. Yes, there is warfare, but it always takes, it takes a lot of discipline right. um, and not understand, fully understand, coming in to understand, to know that when you have any type of leadership role or anything, and I don't even think it even matters to titles or different positions, but as a, as a child of God, you know, you have to live a consecrated life. Right. Um, and so from there, it was just more of like a, I knew I had to do it. And sometimes I just felt like, you know, should I have really accepted this? You know, right. like it was always like a, a question. Um, right. And God will always remind me, you know, you're going to always have tests and trials. You're going you're gonna to always go through some form of test. Right. Um, but it's really to test your character, it's to strengthen you, it's to mature you. Um, and so even within that separation, you know, you're going to have to separate from something, whether right. it's separating from specific lifestyles or um, what you do, you know, and as we, because we are to lead by example. And so right. I didn't really live a crazy life. I had already kind of let some things go when I did, mm -hmm. you know, accept my call and my assignment. Yeah, that's, that's the area that I wanted to uh, stay on a little bit because mm -hmm. you, the first thing you were saying is I had to do this. I had to uh, step away from, I had yeah. to lose because ele elevation requires shifting. It yeah. requires you moving. It's like, it's like you have a furniture in your house, right? And you always clean it, but you never actually lifted it. Right. Yeah. So in order to clean under that thing, you need to move it from where it is in order to clean it. So in so doing like me, my, my mm -hmm. family is always looking at me because 
what they know when I did some thorough cleaning because the yes. chair changes position, the whole room end up changing. I put up drapes before you know it. I have new pillows because I'm cleaning. And when mm -hmm. I'm cleaning, I'm realizing, you know what? I need to go behind this. And as I'm moving it, I say, okay, it's time to just, why don't I just put this over here? Why don't I do this? Mm -hmm. So in the process of elevation, you have to declutter. You have to lose, let, bring yourself away from yeah. the norm right? The people yeah. that are normal in your life, things that you've gotten comfortable with because mm -hmm. you realize that this elevation is requiring, you know what? I can't go to this level with this attitude or this yeah. person that isn't changing because they're going to keep me, you know, they're going to keep me here. Mm -hmm. And if I don't let them go, then I won't be able to go to the next level. You understand? Yeah. yeah. So, so this is a constant uh, thing that I see with elevation. Now, a lot of times we speak about the trials and everything. That mm -hmm. is just the stretching, right? Mm -hmm. uh, about four years ago, the Lord had me go into, I think it was 2019, with a um, slingshot. Mm -hmm. For us to understand, in order for us to get to that des destination, right, to where God wants us, we had to go to the stretching. Oh, that yeah. stretching is not comfortable. That's mm -hmm. where we see it as tests and trials mm -hmm. and all of that, right? Because we had to go through that. It's really the stretch, it's not yeah. tests and trials. Because in, even a bow and arrow, in order for you to shoot to that target, it had to retract, mm -hmm. right? In retracting, it is stretching and it's expanding. Yeah. That is where we fall in this category where we call it tests and trials. This happened. They had to happen because mm -hmm. they are all a part of the stretch so that God can catapult you into the direction that he wants you to be in. So yeah. all that is is the stretching. It's not comfortable. Mm -hmm. All right? It's not comfortable, but it's necessary. Yes. You understand? It's necessary. And once it has happened, once you've gone over, you understand why. There's mm -hmm. always like, hmm, if this didn't happen, this wouldn't happen. Yes. If this didn't happen, that wouldn't happen. Because it all is a part of the stretch. You mm -hmm. understand? And so with the stretching, that stretch you and catapult you forward. So we call it tests and trials. We call it all of the things that we call them. But it's really the stretch. If we really understand it as the stretch, then we'll know it's expected. And it only means that the further we retract, the further we will go ahead. So yeah. we're going to lose some things. Things are going to fall out. We're going to be distant from friends. And it brings you to that place of loneliness because you know why it's lonely? You've left what you were comfortable with. Yeah. You've left your norm. Mm -hmm. You are so far ahead. It's like you're on the other island. Right. <laughs> right? So right now, you have to find, like, what's here? What's on this island? Who's here? Um, who's in this area? Where is the like-minded people? Yeah. You understand yeah. me? Because I need this. Because once you make that leap, it will be a lonely place. Mm -hmm. And people will say this in ministry. They say mm -hmm. this a lot, especially when you're a child of leadership. They think they automatically are giving you things. You mm -hmm. understand me? Not seeing that you put the work in. Yeah. Right? And sometimes even family members might not even acknowledge. So for them, they even acknowledge that God, the God in you and yeah. the work that you do. Because sometimes because of the politics of things, they would rather bypass you mm -hmm. and pull somebody else in. That happens as well. Yeah. You know, so you have two sides of it. But I'm sure eventually they will see, you know what? She worked. You know, once people get out of their feelings, I right. call it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> once people get out of their feelings yeah. and really look at it, they'll see, you know what? She's really been doing it. She has earned this. You know, mm -hmm. she has earned this. And I have children too. So they're growing in ministry, but they're growing a ministry based on their spiritual growth and maturity. Yeah. We're not putting them in positions because they are children, right. but because of the maturity that they can handle this and God called them for it. Because yeah. neither one, me or my husband, want our children, wanted our son to be a pastor. We would say, mm -hmm. we would like, just be regular, you know, <laughs> but just work for God. Because yeah. It's not all this glitz and glam no. that people make it out to. It's a life of sacrifice. Yes. 24-7 sacrifice. 
Yeah. So I understand. But two years ago to now, I'm sure there's more maturity, right? Let's yeah. Talk about the. Let's talk about Pastor Stephanie now. Who is she now from yesterday? Yes, I would say definitely the stretch. It's God stretched me. I didn't even know he could stretch me as far as he stretched me. <laughs> <laughs> but he has stretched me. Um, and I am now, I would say, honestly, that I'm very confident in in who he's called me to be. Yeah. Um, I'm confident in the things that he has assigned me to. I'm I'm confident in in the words that he will give me. Um mm-hmm. It took some time. And in that stretching, you know, God had to really pour out, pull some things out of me to where I had to grow up. I had to have a better attitude about things because I wasn't just had walking with a title, but there were people that I have to serve. There are people who I have to speak life into. And a lot of times I may not always feel good, but there's somebody that may say, hey, I need a prayer. I need to talk. Those were the things I had to kind of get out of my shell. So it's like, I'm probably the most talkative, sociable person that I've ever been (laughs) when I look at it now, because I had to step out of me. I had to kind of like, you know, it's not about me, you know, it's about the agenda of God and it's about helping his people. And if I'm assigned or connected to them, then I have to be alert and I have to be aware and I have Mm -hmm. to be very mature um, to say, you know what, I can put this to the side for right now and let me get myself together because I have to pour into these people. And I believe that even during that stretch that God was not only pouring in to me right. um, but he was getting me ready so that I can pour into others and I'm not exactly. saying that it's not good that you don't pour into yourself right. um, but in that particular time to look at where he has me now and the things that you know he is releasing through me it was just like a wow okay this right. makes sense now I see why you had me get out of this relationship or I see why you had me cut off these certain groups of people i see why i couldn't attend certain events anymore you know it was just building up constantly and i mean he's been doing it even now still um but it's just being able to kind of set boundaries to say that you know i am in a different position and it's not that i'm better than you but this is something i have to do yes i can no longer entertain certain crowds and if we're not on the same page spiritually then we cannot journey together no no. as close as it used to be yeah it's true and you just spoke about pouring because in order to pour you have to have in you if you don't have anything you cannot pour you're pouring out empty right so you all constantly when god called you as a leader you have to constantly be poured into. Yeah. Now, whether this is something that you're doing personally, mm-hmm. but you must have a covering that's pouring into you mm-hmm. that you can pour into the other. It's like a water fountain, right? Yes. If there is no water, that it's not going to spray. No. And that water just keeps recycling, right? Mm-hmm. But after a while, you still have to treat it. You still have to take care of it or else yeah. it's going to become cloudy or it's even going to dry out. Mm-hmm. So in order to pour into others, you have to have inside of you because if there's nothing, there's nothing that you can pour. And yeah. the more that you're pouring, God is making room. It's like you have a reservoir now. Before you know it, you have reservoirs that you didn't even know and you can pull from. Yeah. You know but these yeah. were these were placed in you from the beginning. Everything that you've done along the way, the journey, these were little reservoirs that God was depositing here, here, here. Because mm-hmm. when you're in leadership, believe it or not, you you end up working in the fivefold. Yes. Right? All of these come forward. Yes. One you might be most strongest in, mm-hmm. and that might be the area that you focus on, but yeah. every one of them are activated because yeah. he has deposited in you in all of these places. Mm-hmm. But I will encourage you because you're very young. I would encourage you to stay poured into, stay under your, your parents, stay under leadership. Sometimes young people can't even always uh, receive from the people that they're always around. They need somebody yeah. else to pour into yeah. them. Seek that. It's it's nothing bad for you to do if you can't if you can no longer get it from you know if you can't get it from home and you have to seek elsewhere to grow. You understand yeah. because that's a part of growth. Because after a while, if there's no change but you're growing, then your part is gonna become small, right? Yeah. And now your roots you gotta you gotta get out of that, mm-hmm. and then you have to now be moved either into a bigger part 
are in the ground so yeah. that your root can spread. So mm -hmm. that's basically what God has been doing with your life, you know, yeah. and I, I'm happy to see two years ago to who you are today. I see more maturity. Mm -hmm. I see more growth, you know, and it that's really commendable. Thank you. Yeah. And, and you said something about, you know, you know, if you can't be poured into, you know, right. even in, in the home front, yes. um, I'm grateful for my parents, but I knew mm -hmm. even in that, even in the stretch, and I feel like God has been stretching me over the last year. Right. Um, but even in that stretch, the people that he did disconnect me from, he mm -hmm. brought people that I needed that were very vital to right. this elevation. So he would send me someone from way across the country to right. to be as like a mentor or something who could get, you know, exactly. pour wisdom into me. I would have different people from all over the world who would just come with me, pray with me, you know, right. kind of just, just help build my spirit as well as my parents. And so, right. you know, some people do feel like, you know, I have to go somewhere else, but it was never in right. a respect where, you know, I'm going to leave you uh, or, you know, I want to go somewhere else. You know, I said that I'm going to stay in position until God. Until he's ready. Until he's ready. Until he's ready. I said, ready. But until this time, this has definitely been a, a, a great training ground for me um they right. are supportive you know they and it shows it shows that they they trained you well you understand it shows that and i believe that they are proud of you and the growth that god mm -hmm. is doing like i have a young son now he's a young youth pastor right mm -hmm. We're, right now my husband is not not like in the retired mode for us to say oh he's gonna take over the church or anything like that but we allowed him to grow as our youth pastor yeah and I bring him to grow even if it means god is gonna move him elsewhere mm -hmm. to do ministry you know we can't hold him back because ministry is not about just staying in the four walls. It's not about right. just being in the community. Sometimes God have to move you. He moved Abraham. He moved Joseph. Mm -hmm. He moved every single one of them from their norm to go ahead and lead people that they didn't even know. Yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. And that's where it's more effective. So mm -hmm. now I also see that you have this book. I'm going to bring the book up and you can go ahead and talk, share it with the audience on today. It says, um, he choose me. Let's talk about this. Okay. So this is my very first book, um, that I released. It'll be three years on September 19th. And so I'm getting mm -hmm. ready to relaunch it. Um, and normally throughout the year, I would host a virtual, um, conference to empower women. Um, and God will give me specific themes. And so, um, there are a lot of things that I kind of slept on even when I released it. I mm -hmm. wasn't fully confident in the things that God wanted me to do as right. it was attached to the connected to the book. And so this year um, I'm getting ready to relaunch it. And there are so many different components that are attached to the book. This book talks about my journey to saying yes to God. Um, of course, it was a very extensive journey, but there were seven things that I pulled out from that and mm -hmm. talked about the um, identity, understanding and finding who you are in Christ, um, your journey, the process, the encounter that you have with the Lord, yes. um, your commitment, your yes. And I also yes. shared um, a prophetic message that my pastor um, had released to me in regards to that, which gave me confirmation mm -hmm. about the title he chose me. And so he chose me, I call it a movement and I believe that God, um, is going to really bless the lives of women um, and also men too. It's just not specifically designed um, right. for women, but it is a book um, that really just shares my personal testimony. Yeah, that's your theory. Yes. Yeah, and it also helps other women and other people who may be dealing um, with some form of commitment, whether it's right. to Christ, whether it's to commitment to a relationship, a marriage. Right. Um, right. I kind of, you know, just kind of went off and on with those, but it just talks about you know, what you deal with. Um, I was right. very transparent with it. Um, and so that's getting ready to relaunch again um, on September 19th and it's available. Ooh, um, September, now. that's my favorite month. You know, this is yeah. my birthday month. So <laughs> I just love anything that comes out in September. Yes. You know, I just love it, love it, love it. Yeah. So I, I can, I, again, I congratulate you for the work that you're doing and keep doing it because it is necessary in the kingdom. But the book is a statement itself when it says he choose me. So anytime somebody questions why you, 
that's always your answer. You choose me. Mm -hmm. I didn't choose myself. You know, this is the last thing that I wanted to go do, but he chose me. So anytime somebody <laughs> asks you a question, just remember that don't cower, don't run away. He chose me. And that's it. If you have anything, go talk to God. If yes. you have any complaints, take it to God's complaint department. You understand? And mm -hmm. I love what he said. I bless who I want to bless. Okay. Yes. Yes. I choose who I want to choose. Mm -hmm. And nobody can tell me what to do. Yeah. And all of us, God can say, I'm grown. Mm -hmm. I do what I want and choose who I want. So yeah. when they want to ask you why you, you just got to remember your story and your journey and your purpose because of it. You know, purpose actually comes from experience, right? Yes. Because of the experience you had, now you found purpose. Now, mm -hmm. he chose me is now your journey. That's your purpose. That's where you're pushing people because that's the place that you were personally, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Now, what would you like to tell our viewers and uh, people your age, because you're young, you know, people your age about the choice, because I know the choice isn't easy. It's a life of sacrifice. There are certain things, like you said, you have to let go and realize you can no longer be a part of. Yeah. I would say to anyone who is contemplating um, making a choice to either go in ministry, whether it's choosing a better job, whether it's retirement, getting out of a relationship, whatever it may be, just understand mm -hmm. that God has chosen you for something great. Um, and like Pastor Dr. Linda said, you know, you're God's choice. You will yeah. always be his choice. And there's nothing that can change God's mind concerning you and concerning the things that he has for you. And so it's really just an act of faith. And so I urge you and encourage you to just trust God in the process and then allow him to do what needs to be done in your life so that, so that you can get to that destination and that place and purpose and in Christ because Mm -hmm. Yes, it may be tough. Yes, it may be challenging. But I tell you, this is probably the best decision that I ever made because God chose me and to understand okay. and know that he has chosen me out of millions of people to do something great and to to build his kingdom. I take that as a very special, special thing. It's very special and yeah. it means so much to me. And so why not choose God? Why not Come choose on. his will? Why not choose his purpose for your life? Because his purpose is greater than anyone else's desire or need of you and so i just pray that you choose god in this season because this is probably the best time to choose him because there's so many things going on in yeah. the world there's so many different practices of of different religions and different things like that that wants to mimic the things of god and wants yeah. to pull you away from him but to understand and know that the truth that the truth will set you free Thank and you. god's word is the truth and so everything that god has spoken and said about you it is true and so i pray that you continue to make great choices and that you continue to choose god because he will always choose you amen amen he chose amen. me so once again, today's affirmation is true elevation and true elevation. You must know that God chose you, right? He chose you and no one else. When you ask why me, he chose you. Don't question God. And if they question you, that's your answer. He chose me. Amen. I'm going to mm -hmm. look at some scriptures. You know, I like to bring the scriptures, some scriptures on elevation. James 4.10, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Hebrews 13, 17 says, Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch your souls as they that must give account that they may do it with joy, not with grief, for that is unprofitable to you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 40, 22. It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth and the inhabitants thereof as grasshoppers. He stretched out the heavens as curtain and spread them out as a tent to dwell. So once again, he chose you. Remember that God chose you today. Father God, on today, we have many of our viewers here who might be dealing with, should I move? Should I, should I move? Should I leave my friends? How are they going to feel? Because they're feeling that they're comfortable and they don't want to be in an uncomfortable position. 
But on today, I want to remind them, oh God, that you chose them. You chose them for such a time as this, and they shall not be afraid. And everything that they feel is a setback is just a setup for the future because it's all a path of the stretching. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. amen. So thank you so much once again, uh, Pastor Stephanie. Let our viewers know where they can find you. Okay, you can find me. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram at Stephanie Smith. Um, you can also feel free to um, visit my website at www.stephaniesmith.com where you can stay updated to all of the events that are coming soon. I do have some things that will be released soon. And so if you would like to add me, follow me, you can follow me there. You can also follow me on the basic podcast as well that is on Facebook. Um, so those are the two few places um, that you can reach me on. So I look forward to connecting with you all soon. Great, great, great. So once again, thank you everyone for watching. This has been a segment on She Mergen's Motivational Affirmations. We not only want to give you affirmations, but to show you examples of people that are going through the process and how it's working in their life. On today was Pastor Stephanie and you see the elevation. You saw the, necessi the necessity for the stretching and understand that it's not trials and tribulations. It's a part of the stretch because God wants to take you higher. Allow him to. Don't resist God and remember that he chose you on today. Until next week, oh, same time, same channel, She Mergen's Motivational Affirmation. Thank you for watching. Let's go.